Hi everyone. So this is a setup video where I'm going to walk you through the gear that I have and uh, feel free to ask any questions uh, if you have any ar around this gear. So what you see here is a CYG 54G tripod from uh, Supermount. I use this in uh, both uh, equatorial and uh, um, Altai situations for both visual and imaging purposes. Uh, just one point of note though, this is um, you need to be mindful of the height of the tripod uh, if you're a visual person and you like to observe standing then you might want to have a, you know an extension pair on top to get you some more height but if you're seated and you're observing then it's probably not an issue you no know, i observe regularly with the TYA 150 and uh, you know, i've been comfortable with this uh, in terms of mechanical features um, you know there's a bubble level to help you with a uh, leveling there is a uh, there's a gear here and you can adjust the gear using this handle uh, you can get you can go all the way down and you can uh, you can you can get this much height on top and uh, the height is useful you know if you have a longer refractor and you want to clear the legs the tripod legs when you're slewing the telescope um, overall i've been very happy with the cyg 54g model uh, this is a south korean company and uh, i've had good experience with him I uh, have the manufacturer if I had any questions on how to use these things. Um, now it's got a, a lot of accessory slots and you know, if you probably want to mount something else. And uh, so far I think just whatever comes out of the box has been convenient enough for me. Um, this is currently my most used tripod. Uh, it weighs about 26 pounds but ergonomically it's uh, quite comfortable. It folds compactly for transportation and travel. Uh, and uh, on storage, uh, but uh, when it's time to use, it's quite easy to deploy it in the backyard. And it takes about a minute to just uh, unlock the legs and uh, stretch it out, and use the levels to place, you know, on a leveling on a, on a fairly even surface. So when you bring out the tripod and uh, keep it, like I said, uh, you want to make sure the level is uh, more or less even. <coughs> And then you just drop the mount on the tripod. And uh, once you drop it in, into the shoe, you can you get a 360 uh, rotational angle. <coughs> and then you point it towards the pole star. And uh, there is a lock nut at the mod bottom of the uh, geared center column. You can engage it and then you can start twisting it to hold it hold the mount in place. Yeah, so now the mount is locked onto the tripod. There are also three screws on the top of the plate that is part of the tripod. So you just engage them. Uh, it's, you don't have to keep it super tight, it's just to prevent tip over. Um, yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it to mounting the um, RSU 300 onto the tripod. Now, one other thing I should mention if you're trying to set it up as a new mount is to adjust the, uh, the angle, you know, the equatorial angle, the altitude. So the mount comes with this Allen wrench key, right? So you, uh, if you look at the, the northwest side of the mound, there is a small hole. There is no such hole on the other side, so there is only one side uh, you can do this. So you can engage this and you loosen it like one eighth of a turn. You don't even have to go one fourth. So somewhere between one eighth to one fourth is all you need. Like you don't don't make sure you don't remove the screw entirely. You just need it sufficiently loose, and that'll allow the equatorial head to be you know adjusted, the altitude to be adjusted. Um, and uh, you also need to loosen the altitude locks, of course. So once you loosen the altitude locks, then you can adjust it. Um, so one thing I should remind you uh, of is. You know, now that the locks are disengaged, if you if you disengage the altitude adjustments, 
is already unlocked, you can see that it's going to have a free play. So make sure you do this with no telescope attached on top, otherwise it's just going to fall over. So yeah, lock it up and then you can uh, engage the locks and uh, you can try it out. See how much how much play you have with just the minor adjustments, the fine adjustments. So you can go all the way up. And you can see the range of what's possible on the back of the mount. You can look at the pictures to see what I'm talking about, but um, just make sure that the range is acceptable to your use case. And uh, once you have it figured out, make sure that you lock it really tight. You cannot break the mount, so. Make sure it's loose and uh, make sure it's fully tight and then you lock up the altitude adjustment knobs. We'll perform the actual polar alignment at night but for now the setup is good. And uh, the same thing with uh, the azimuth adjustments. Let me turn it around. So once you loosen the altitude adjustment latch in the front, so what I did was, this is lock, this is unlock. So once you have it unlocked, You can then adjust the altitude range. It's, it's very smooth. And uh, you loosen this way and tighten this way. You can see the mount moving. So that's how you adjust the, uh, the, the azimuth. And altitude, like I said, you disengage both altitude lock adjustments and then you can adjust the height the altitude is very nice to use uh, one thing I will share is um, I try to make the last adjustment pushing the mount up because uh, you're using gravity to hold it tighter whereas when you're making the final adjustment when you're going down there's a bit of a free play, you don't get as much feedback. Even though it is working inside, you feel as though you're not actually making any movement. So to counter that, I just disengage the lock and then I go a little bit down. And then I make the last adjustment going up. So when the mount is getting pushed up, it just, it gives you this last amount of feedback needed to tune it in uh, dial that in correctly. Anyways, this is a, a little bit minor point, but I think it's uh, useful. Some people have asked about it. Um, yeah, that's about it for the uh, mount initial configuration. And uh, once you've done with your azimuth adjustment, just lock it up. Just like you lock the altitude.
So that was me loading the Raza 8 onto the Rainbow Astro RSU 300. Um, it was a little clumsy to load it a little bit high. You know, what I uh, otherwise do is I lower the height a little bit lower so I can tip in the OTA onto the saddle and visually confirm things before I engage the, engage the knobs. But this works too. I think I'm not too picky about mounting this OTA. It's quite lightweight. Uh, with a 150, 150B, um, I, I find it... Uh, there are two ways I load it. One is, you know, I raise it even higher and then I bring the OTA on a shoulder height and then I place it and then I engage the locks. The other one is, and I carry it like a baby and then I, and I just dip it in and then uh, for that I keep it lower. Both works, uh, whichever is convenient for you, you can try it out. But in terms of uh, loading, uh, it's, it's quite easy peasy, uh, especially if you have a, a compact and, you know, easy to manage scope. Um, so this is my grab and go setup, everything is pre-connected. I use the ASA Air Pro here uh, because all my gear is ASA Air compatible uh, in this case. Uh, I am transitioning on to Nina for my uh, larger refractors, so I'll post another video for that later. Uh, but again, like th this is my grab and go, current grab and go setup where uh, everything is, is ready to go, connected already with the ASA Air Pro. And uh, the only thing that's, uh, the, there are three things that, are, uh, that I have to do uh, at the time of setup, which is one is the ethernet. So I have an ethernet cable on the backyard that connected to the ASA Air Pro, so I can then use it from my living room. And the other thing is obviously the power and the USB cable to the mount. So I, I keep it wound on the uh, guide scope and the evenings, you know, like you saw, I just take it out and plug it in. The third thing is the, the actual power. I use a Talon cell 12 volt slash 24 volt battery. So I bring it out uh, right about polar alignment time after sunset and uh, connect it. In terms of the main camera, I have the uh, ZWO the ASI, ASI 294mm uh, Pro. It's a cooled camera, it doesn't have a dew heater. So we, I added uh, the ASI's uh, the dew heater strip. Um, it's, it's basically a sticker or with a heating element on it. So you just peel the sticker and slap it in and you connect the uh, 12 volt power supply to it. So the reason I am sticking with this camera and not switching to my 2600, even though I have it, is uh, it takes a very minimal backspacing. So I'm able to use a filter slider um, instead of having to unscrew the camera every time. The filter slider allows me to just slide in a uh, filter each night. So tonight I'm gonna do O3 uh, because I have a couple of hours before the moon shows up. Anyway, yeah, this is just a quick video on uh, me using the OTA uh, for a, a grab-and-go imaging session in the backyard with a, you know, very lightweight um, you know, processes. There's no balancing or getting things fine-tuned. Uh, just, just drop it in and, and you, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And uh, of course, pull alignment, you know, takes about a minute to two minutes, sometimes three minutes, depending on how off you are. But uh, even that, you know, the more often you do it, uh, you get a hang of doing it uh, uh, quite efficiently. Um, yeah, that's it for me uh, for today. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer. 